Hi there, today you're going to join me at an auction. Those ladies were exactly right. This auction had been rescheduled. It was supposed to take place in March, but we had a suddenly it was like the snow copolips or snow cropolips or snow mageddon. I don't know. It was like crazy amount of snow on a Saturday. And so this was rescheduled for the uh, first weekend in April. So I was very excited about going to this auction. What I didn't think to consider was that it was going to be an expensive auction, which it turned out to be an expensive auction because the last few auctions that I've been to, they were pretty reasonable. I was able to get a lot of things and the things that I had my eye on went for very high money. So I was able to bid on some things, but other things just went way high real fast. Um, I didn't stay till the end. I tried to stay till the end, but then I realized, you know what, I'm just not going to be able to get what I want for a good price. And there's going to be other auctions later. So I decided to leave. But I am going to show you all of the beautiful things that they had up for sale. If you follow me on Instagram, I took a picture of all this Ellie Smith blue glass. This is what I really, really wanted to get. I was prepared to bid high, but it started out high and went even higher. So I watched it walk away. <laughs> I thought this piece was very unusual. It looked like it was part of an e-pern or a candle holder. I'd never seen one of those before. So I admired the blue glass, but alas, I did not get any. There is a coffee pot there on the one on the left, the stripy one with the gold right there that I'm opening up the pot. That was beautiful. I thought this was so, so pretty. It's a coffee pot or a chocolate pot. I really like the pattern on it. But that was very, very expensive. <laughs> I really like that. I really thought that was pretty. And then in front of it, they also had some china and they had that on there and I thought well that doesn't go in the candle holder it goes with that <laughs> so I thought that set was very pretty I'm going to show you the back no, the bottom of it hand painted in the pond so this is from the 1920s at least they had some hens on nest This is a hat pin holder, and I always remember what Jocelyn told me that hat pins, some of them fell out, but it was okay. Uh, hat pins used to be really long, but then there was a law that they had to be shorter. So if you find a long hat pin, it's oh, I think it's worth more or more like higher, more desirable. On top of the, they had the tables like on top of each other. So I'm showing you the top of a table. 
And then I, I was hoping to bid on this box just for the fun of it because it was like all of the decanter lids. But I did not stay around long enough for that. I did actually, however, win this box lot. And I thought this was interesting because it looked like a Matryoshka doll, but it's like a child's rattle toy. And I thought, well, that's unusual. So I did win that lot. I will show you what I did win at the end of this video. I think the person liked pigs because there was quite a few pig things. Here's some more pig things. They had some Wade Whimsies. I'm uh, quickly selling through the Wade Whimsies that I received, but I was thinking, do I need more Wade Whimsies? <laughs> I did try to bid on them, but they went a little, a little out of um, my comfort zone. Not too many figurines at this auction. This is dried cactus. Sometimes people make uh, pin cushions out of that. I thought the little mid-century modern cats were cute. A little beat up though. And then this mushroom with the frog was made out of uh, cement because it was very heavy. And then there was a little, little lone mushroom there. And then this giant snail was really cute, but the antennas had been uh, broken off. They had some slippers, some glass slippers or glass shoes. And you can see on the right, there were more Wade Whimsies. And here are some more. Where I live, we have a lot of in-person auctions now, of course, online auctions and garage sales, but we don't have estate sales, which I've only been to one estate sale, which I think was a fluke um, because you just don't see them advertised around here. So I would be interested to know in the comments if you in your area, if you have a lot of in-person auctions or if it's mostly estate sales or maybe a combination of both. And even like church bazaars, we don't really have a lot of church sales. I don't think we do. Like, because I really keep my eye out. Oh, my husband used to have one of those dogs. We still have it at my in-law's house. And this beautiful flow blue reminded me of Jocelyn because she collects it. So I'd be interested in the comments of whether you go to estate sales or church sales or in-person auctions. I love in-person auctions. Even though this one was expensive for me, it was still fun to look at everything and to see things that you've never seen before. It was a really big property. It was in a smaller town that is nearby me, um, but it seemed more like a farm, a small little farm. It was a big, big house. And then the, the property went way, way, way back and they had this huge barn. And inside this barn, they had the furniture that was all gonna be auctioned off. So I thought I'd walk around and show you inside the barn some of the old furniture. I thought this clothes tree coat rack no coat rack was really cool and then here we are outside near the house and I'm showing you the bird houses I thought they were unusual they weren't for sale they probably stayed with the house but I thought that was neat these were very interesting these are handmade wooden pieces and some of them were marked by a well-known folk artist. I don't know a lot about folk art, but I think maybe it's this name here. It's very, very famous person or very well-known person had made some of those figurines. I thought that was neat. I think they sold them 
some of them were sold separately and the rest were sold as a lot, if I remember correctly. And that was a little Amish hat, but most likely from a doll. Then I got hungry. One of the best things about going to an auction in the morning is you get a breakfast sandwich. So here I'm showing you my breakfast sandwich once we get it in focus here. <laughs> some thread and yarn some thread and some hand yeah some good wooden stool uh spools but get out some whatever thread spools but get out ten ten somebody get out ten dollar take it five is all and five dollar get some of the two three two somebody get out two dollar Get out of it, get up one, two, a dollar, but get a two, down of it, get up four, you better get four here, four, somebody better get out, six, down of it, get a six, and I'll heat, I'll get it, somebody better get a ten, I'll get it, get it, get it, get it, get a ten, eight, somebody better get a ten, here, eight, somebody better get a ten, down of it, get it, get it, get ten, sold, eight dollars, eight dollars, number forty six, a buyer behind me, gonna be forty six, your buyer. I've been to this auctioneer's auctions before. The people are super nice. That man that you heard is super fast, but still very easy to understand once you get in the rhythm of the auctioneer. I always find it fascinating how quickly something can go and then when you're bidding on something and you think it's, oh, I have to pay 10 and they're like, no, you only paid eight. And they usually do skip seven. And I wonder if it's because of the rhythm or if they just want to go with even numbers. Sometimes they'll bring it back down if people are thinking about it. They'll be like, do you, will you take seven? Yes, all right, eight, 10, 12. But it's mostly even numbers I have found in my experience at in-person auctions. At another auction house that I used to go to before they moved. Now I don't really go to their auctions anymore because it's really far away. But I, I asked them, how do you become an auctioneer? And some of you might already know this and some of you may not. But you can be an apprentice or you can go to auction school, which I thought was interesting. So here is everything that I purchased. Well, not everything I purchased because some of the things I I really, really wanted that I know other people would want and the other things are kind of just donation things. So I'm not going to show you the things I donated to my local thrift store, but I'll show you the things that I am definitely keeping to resell. So I had never seen one of these before. It is wooden. It, you can see that it's wood right here through the paint is wearing. It has a nice little chime and I had never seen one like this before. So that is the main reason why I picked this lot. And in the lot, there were also these vintage planters. Here's an elephant. It does have a lot of paint wear, typical for this paint because this is cold painted on after it's been glazed. So it does come off very easily. There is a little chick here who has lost all of their paint, has this really pretty bow on the back. And it has a little bit of the black eye left there. Here is a blue little baby boot. This is left in Japan. It's a parakeet. It's in nice shape. A little bit of a chip right there, but overall in really great shape. This was also a vintage um, toy. It's made in Hong Kong and it's dated 1977. So the vintage baby toy and these little miniature birds that are in good shape. This one is marked Japan, it looks like, and that one is marked Japan as well. There were a whole bunch of toy, of uh, game pieces, checkers, dice, and then in this one, let's see, this one here. It has Monopoly pieces, and the Monopoly pieces have a little blue tinge to them. And I don't know what that's all about. I thought that was interesting, that there are Monopoly pieces, but they definitely have a blue look to them. Let me show you. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but it definitely has a blue, blue look to it. So they have a whole bunch of those. This I haven't cleaned up yet. Who remembers these? I love playing this when I was little, pick up sticks. So a, a little bit of pick up sticks here. Let me brighten this up a little bit. I am using my tripod. So 
so I can use both hands. So I apologize if things are kind of down here. <laughs> that would be terrible if the whole hall portion of the video was like, then I got these, or then I got these. So I'm trying to keep it in the middle for you. Uh, this came with the Matrushka. You saw that in the video. This is a rattle that doesn't rattle anymore. It needs to be cleaned up. See if I can clean it up a little bit. This is also marked made in Hong Kong and a very good year, 1974. And it says Louis A. Dodet, maybe? Oh, wait. Dettinger Company Incorporated. So that's cute. That would look cute in a bathroom. And then this little cutie behind, look at him. He's a bank, or it's a bank, and it says best on the back. And I don't see any other markings. I'm going to have to try and clean that up a little bit. There was this truck. I did clean up this truck. It's a plastic truck. And it is marked Bay Toys Incorporated, Wald Lake, Michigan, made in the USA. So it does have some surface wear. These sell for pretty decent money. I mean, they're not like crazy money, but it's worth something. So I thought, was, thought that was a cute little truck. It cleaned up nicely. It's a timer. That seen better days. Is it going through? Yeah, there you go. That's an unfair timer. It's not even going down. I wouldn't want to use that. Let's see. You'd be brushing your teeth forever. Oh, there were these cards. These old cards. And I thought, well, what are these? And what they are, so David's chum, Jonathan, what leper dipped into the Jordan seven times and became clean? Who saved Moses from a watery grave? So these are, who was, who was turned into a pillar of salt? So these are catechism cards or Bible cards, Bible study cards. They're very old. You can tell that for sure. There was this little baggie of things, little doodads. I'll have to look and see because there were some Polly Pockets in the, this is not Polly Pocket, that's, um, oh, that's the thing that goes on your Crocs. That right there, a fibbit, fidget, something, oh, a gibbet, right there, a gibbet. Um, and there is, um, what's her name, Jasmine. But in this bag, there were some, there might be some Polly Pocket things, maybe. My friends Andrea and Andy were there at the auction with me, and Andy noticed that there were some uh, Polly Pocket things, and Polly Pockets can sell for pretty good money. And then look, here's a little swan. This is probably made in Japan as well. I also bid on a lot of linens. <laughs> Oh, look, they ran out of the white and finished it up with the blue. That would have made me mad. It is late while I'm making this video, so even though Indy sounds like she's sleeping, <laughs> she's just breathing. That's our Indy and Susie. 
inside along with the linens was this little outfit I would guess this is for a little boy only because this cap came with it and they look like they are the same material I could be wrong I am not an expert on vintage clothing by any means and then there was this bonnet it has a black bow on it and the lace and the fringe around it you can see and then the last thing that I'm going to show you is super duper cute. Mixed in with some of the figurines were these candlestick holders. And I thought, oh, those are neat. It's the candle holders. And then around here, you put the flowers in. It's a pretty color. And then I flipped them over and they're Holt Howard, <laughs> which was, I love finding Holt Howard. I don't find a lot of Holt Howard. So that was very exciting. So there's candle holders with the little flower things. These little bone china have a giraffe family of three and back there is a horse family of three and then there were these little <clears throat> fawns I guess. It seems like t they are the same like these two look the same and those two look the same and then there's a little baby frog. So that was the super cute little thing I wanted to show you. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll see ya.